HTD level threes. Now these have been on my list for like three years, all the years, forever. And I've never heard them till like a month and a half ago. And the person who sent it to me was like, hey, I'll be done and I'll be done in two weeks, maybe three weeks. So they've been a month and a half because when I get something I like, I tend to just put off reviews. It also happens when I get something that really sucks and I put off reviews because I don't know what to tell you people when something sucks real bad. But that is not the case for these, thankfully. Now here, I have a stack of other home theater speakers, or speakers I've recommended for home theater. My XRM 6.1 Emotivas, which aren't in production anymore. Six and a half inch driver, nice one and a quarter inch or one inch soft dome. Home theater use, great. Fluence SX6, uh, the bargain basement best home theater speakers you can bibbidi bibbidi buy. Uh, it's five and a quarter inch, giant box, rear ported, nice soft dome. Then the just rape scene JBL Studio 530s, which to this to this moment, this moment right now, are still the best musical speakers I've ever heard. But all those are home theater are beaten by these. Because there's two things you need when you when you're talking about a home theater speaker. You need clear, concise, precision, pointable sound and volume. Fucking volume. You need loud. That's why the PSAs, the $1,200 a pair PSA MT110s got such high ratings for me because they were very good for music. D you know, down to a certain point and they needed that crazy subwoofer. But they were good for music and then they got end of days loud and not that one with Arnold Schwarzenegger that wasn't that good but I'm talking about the real end of days the full horseman of the apocalypse no fear at all of exploding them ever sort of loud and these you could taste that in them because I put them on and wasn't expecting much for music I was expecting you know home theater speakers they're just gonna be I and they're better than I they're better than the ITE. They're not as good as the JBLs for music, but they're better than the 6.1s and the Fluence SX6s for music. And that has to do with these tweeters that use the ribbon. They use dual small capped on ribbons and this crazy flared waveguide. Now, let's compare it with a pair of speakers I don't have here right now. The Shanes. A1 RXCs, because that's such an easy to remember model number. I like these better. And for home theater, straight home theater, and for music, I like these better. Now, these are bigger by a lot than the Shane's. I'd say we're looking at two inches taller, probably similar depth, but then the width is just. Just these six and a half. Why don't you go six and a half? Even though that's a complete fucking lie in this pile. I'm just lying to you right now. Because that's a six and a half. And it's narrower than the JBL and the SX6. So. Ta-da! But anyway, once you go six and a half, speakers usually have to get bigger. And these speakers have definitely... They're, they're bigger. They're just bigger. Here's the cover for them, by the way. Very, very plain Jane. They hide what I think makes these speakers amazing, which is some of the looks. They hide that white driver. White drivers are so hard to find. Just high contrast drivers. You gotta go to B&W if you wanna get yellow ones. You gotta go KRK powered monitors. Vanitus have silver. Everything else is boring. Quit being boring. Well, that's silver. But that's like, that doesn't count as a design feature because that little knob should be inverted. I don't remember what I was talking about. Big. These have low end, whereas the PSAs didn't have low end. These actually do. So they can be worked on their own. If you have a 2.0 setup, you're building. And you've got to choose between the Shanes and these. It's pretty much, I, I don't profit from any of them. So I'm going to say these are probably going up above the Shanes for lovability. Because the Shanes tweeter really, you had to get it just right or it got in your face. And at low end, it was it really got down there with the low end, but the mid range is a little. These don't suffer at all. These are 
well balanced, just per. I don't, I don't want to say perfect because I haven't heard perfect yet. When I hear perfect, it'll it'll probably be comparing against those at some point. But I'm talking still music now. I'm still talking music. Still talking music. Absolutely fucking you. you I want a 2.0 music setup. Consider these. Consider these now. Because they're big and they're sort of pretty. This is the Madagascar ebony. You can get them in black or this. This costs more. And I, I, I don't... I know the finish on the, the black ones is going to be the exact same satin. And I wish this was a little bit higher contrast to really make it like look, look better. But whatever. Whatever. They're just pretty and they sound great. And now for home theater, they're the best speakers in this apartment for home theater. Uh, I'm, I've been using them instead of the JBLs here for since I got them. And when you put on Dread, or you put on Drive, or you put on Edge of Tomorrow, or you put on Starship Troopers, or you put on Watchmen for the fifth time, these are the speakers you want up there. Now... I've also been using them with a the phantom center, which means the center channel is turned off my receiver, which is behind her somewhere. And that means all vocals are coming from these as well. So it's getting the left channel and center, and it's getting the right channel and center, and your hearing center. And it's an amazing experience. I may consider buying the HD center channel, which is just two of these, and then this turns sideways. Because you can't buy these individually. That's, that's the unfortunate bit with these, is you can't buy them one at a time. The wave crests are great because you buy them one at a time. You know, I want three of these, and you just put three in. But you can't have three of these. You have to have you have to buy the dedicated center, or you've got to buy three pair, and you've got to use a single rear, and it's, oh, it's a bit of a mess. But, uh, yeah, volume. Volume, volume, volume. I had them up at negative two last night at 1.30 in the morning. Which anyone knows how receivers work. When they hit zero, that's their like happy absolute maximum. And then above that is, you know, danger, danger, Will Robinson. But these were playing the Kill a Kill soundtrack, which was the last song I played on the PSAs before I returned them. So I put on the Kill a Kill track from the Kill a Kill soundtrack. And it was so loud. It was just, you know, anyone human that would have walked in that door at two in the morning. Would have been like, what's going on here? And I would have been like, hmm, yes, the highs are very good. You're just, you're just screaming, screaming. Along with that, uh, concerto, Revel sub. But uh, yeah, I can't knock these speakers for almost anything. For almost anything, the finish is is all right. You know, for three hundred dollars, you're not gonna find bigger better speakers with a better finish you're just not the tweeter is exceptionally good but still not enough to beat the jbl as far as you know locatable sounds and, and imaging but that that six and a half man beat beat my expectations i expected the, the xrm 6.1 to still hold up for low end nope these beat it front ported front ported six and a half six and a half so just the tweeter. If I could put that, tw take that tweeter out and replace it with that, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to do with it. So these are some of the only speak. These are like right up there with all the other speakers that I get. That I'm like, shit. I need to buy a pair of these. Now, that is the that is the Zio's dilemma. He gets to try things, and then all of a sudden he needs them in his life. And I don't want to need these, but if I'm going. They're some of the only speakers I've considered for the home theater aspect of this apartment now. That Because the JBLs, when I do that second bedroom up, I have a, it's just going to be a stereo listening space. for just Like this rack is going to be, half of it's going to be moved in the other room. This is going to be just home theater and it's going to move over there. But the, the JBLs cannot be beaten for music. For just enjoyment and... and sexual emotions towards, you know, uh, John Coltrane. Just, oh, John. Oh, yeah, John. But these do a damn good job of music. Like, if you have a frat house and you've got $500, you buy a pair of these and the Yamaha 201, and then you're done. You're done with that room. Don't, 
don't put in 50 inch, you know, 15 inch pile self-powered, dr don't, just don't. Buy these, take care of them, figure out their limits, lock up the goddamn volume knob, and actually have good loud sound. Good loud sound. That's, that's how I could describe them. They're good, and they're loud. Good and loud. Whereas those are good, but can't quite get loud, and those are good, and can't quite get loud, and those get loud, but now that I've heard all the rest of the world, that tweeter's a little bit too much, too, it's too extra sharp cheddar for my liking. So, uh, I've, uh, let's turn it around. The box isn't as heavy as you think it would be. I mean, it's heavy. They're not featherweights by any mean, but they're not, for the size they are compared to the other ones, I would expect them to be about four or five pounds heavier, and they're not. Dual binding posts, which don't, just, just don't remove the bridges, and don't worry about which side you plug into, it makes no difference, they're connected. It's got these two big heavy screws that you could undo and then uh, mount. I guess they sell a bracket. I should have a pair of those brackets somewhere. But they sell brackets so you could wall mount these. I wouldn't. I mean, they're not rear ported, they're front ported, which is a good thing for home theater, because that means you could, you could sort of get a little bit closer to a wall without it affecting the sound. But still, you want to keep speakers a, a good foot away from the wall, regardless of that. Uh, grr, grr, grr. Like I said, the finish is, is good enough. Squared edges everywhere but the front. They bezeled the, uh, this front piece here. This whole piece is just a piece of, it's just 45. Nice and simple. They set this back. They got these giant hex hex head screws holding this in. This should probably have more than four, but we're going to go with that. That's fine. I can see inside you. The sickness is rising. Um, these, yeah, having never, I only put these on my recommendations list for two years for one reason. I've heard the lower levels, and when we had an issue with those, when I was doing installs in New York, when I had an issue with those, you pick up the phone, and a man in Texas picks up. And he fixes all your problems, and you don't have anything to worry about. They haven't changed much in the six or seven years I've known about HCD. And that's good. That you stick to what's good. It's companies that constantly change the Google logo. Quick, we need to change the Google logo, because, you know, no one uses Google because the logo sucks. Great. No, that's people who go to Google, and they look at it every day. I go to Google, you know, well, I go to it every day also. But I like things that don't change. I don't want to go to a bar that's been there since the 70s and then go there one day and it's all fancy and they put glass counter. No, I like that bar because it hasn't changed in, you know, 50 years. I like speakers that are just good and just are always good. Speakers don't need to be changed as often as people seem to think. Amplifier technology, you know, the, the inputs and stuff, that's fine. You will change DAX. But speakers are pretty, pretty dumb in the, the technological advancements. Like this tweeter, this air you know, ribbon tweeter, that's the most modern thing that these speakers have. And that unless all speakers switch to that, most speakers need to just stay the same. Because that's all, all the stuff is tech that's been around since the dawn of speakers. So this is the only thing that's new-ish. So, God bless them. God bless you guys. They're not built in Texas, but they're down there. Ugh. Do not use these on a desk. Mo these other speakers, all three of them, I've given thumbs up for desk use. And the JBL's thumbs up different parts of anatomy because they're so good on a desk. But these are not desk speakers. I think one person way back in the day bought them for his desk. And I'm like, all right, whatever. But yeah, now this tweeter does not happy here. This tweeter happies there. I had them up behind my audio transparent screen on the Doom stacks, just right through here. And they work so well. Look at the size of them. Are you looking at the size of them? They're, they're not wife friendly. Your wife's going to hate them. You might be able to... Eat. I need a... I need a uh, someone find pictures of this, right? Go, go on. I'll, I'll link in the website where they're sold. The HDD at the bottom. Go there. Show Everyone show their wives and girlfriends these speakers and see what they say about those white drivers. Because they're all black and gray. And I want to know if there is a consensus for 
women enjoying high contrast drivers? And post your findings in the comments. I'll figure out a way to, to rationalize that in the future. But uh, yeah, wait till the sound demo of these. I can't wait. I, I, I can't wait to do the sound demo and then the sadness will come because I'll have to send these away. So these are some of the, these might be my next personal purchase. And we'll talk about that Revel sub next, because that thing. HTD makes a subwoofer for also, oh, let me point this out because I'm not going to talk about it. I'm sure I'm going to forget. HTD makes a subwoofer that is, let's talk about clever design. Like every subwoofer on earth pretty much has the amplifier attached like that. And that's great for compactness. But then you got to run power to it, and then you got to run signal to it, and then you put it in the middle of the room. HTD subs are just boxes with speakers in it, and then a set of a set of you know five-way binding posts. So the amplifier that the sub comes with is a separate little box that you put up on your shelf, and you run one pair of spe one speaker wire length to it, and you plug your signal in this far away, and you plug your power in this far away, and it just that's brilliant. And you could actually hide this, the amp under the sub if you wanted to, but Oh, what I would do, like that sub could be just anywhere in the room if I just had speaker wire to run to it. But now I've got to run power to it and signal and it's a pain in the ass. So HCD does have good ideas. I don't know why no one else is copying their ideas unless they've patented it and that would be sucky. A patent pending subwoofer without an amp built in it. Oh my god, revolution. But yeah, that's, that's it. Home theater speakers, really good ones.